Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the raw and uncut version of the sellout show in Oz. My ah! <laughs> little pretties, you have no idea what we have in store for you today. No, you don't. Why am I dressed like Dorothy? Why am I holding a basket with a pup in ruby red slippers? Why did somebody drop a house on my sister? Damn. <laughs> Welcome to the sellout show version of Oz. You are going to want to watch because today we're discussing the sales process, Yellow Brick Road, and those three skills you need to practice to have better results. And the things you need to avoid. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Stay with us. Watch <laughs> Here we go. Welcome. <laughs> To tell everyone why we're dressed like this today, Diana. Well, I can't. today we will be discussing the yellow brick road of sales. So we had to come dressed for the occasion. Absolutely. Now we've brought to you our uh, Hollywood red carpet movie edition before. This is the uh, yellow brick road of the sales process. Today, I know you might be confused, I will be playing. Dorothy, Dorothy Gale, <laughs> upper. and I will be playing the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> you know, I even, I even brought my ruby red slippers. <laughs> I'm not wearing them. I will get those from you. <laughs> <laughs> and your little dog, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Diane and I thought this would be a fun topic because, you know, oh man, if you read so much about sales right now and sales process. There's so much in the way of technology and um, tactics that we use that I just, both of us agree that, man, you really have to focus on your skills and the soft skills area to, to get you through that sales process to move business forward, which is what it's really all about. So when we did this, we thought, you know what, this makes a lot of sense um, when you're talking about the Wizard of Oz and the specific uh, character attributes and that they find along the way in the sales process, right? And you are going to love the punchline at the end. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let's dive in. Um, welcome, welcome everyone to the sellout show. I stole your line, Diana. <laughs> Where we are always sold out. <laughs> I'm Diana Guerin, the Irreverent Sales Girl, where my mission is to bring a dash of evil to your sales process. <laughs> Today, you may uh, not recognize Diana, but she is playing the Wicked Witch of the... Is it the East or the West? I think it's the West. Wicked Witch of the West. Okay. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> As Sean, the East here today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm Sean Carroll Sandy, Chief Revenue Officer of the Selling Agency, where we coach humans how to sell to other humans. And today, um, if you don't know, uh, if you can't tell, I'm Dorothy. I'm Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've avoided a haircut just so I could get my hair in these braids. It's so perfect. You look like you're straight out of Kansas. Like, for reals. For reals. Straight out of Kansas. Are you going to uh, sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow for us, or should we just... Nope. No. Nope. You know what? I sang The Gambler for y'all one time, and I am not singing. I can't hit those notes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's get started. Let's get started down the sales process. <laughs> you know, so let's, let's talk about the metaphors here throughout this movie. Um, uh, a house just landed on a witch. You are someplace you're not familiar with. Say maybe it's a new sales position. It's a new product. And you've got to kind of um, regroup and get back through your sales process. Uh, we've talked about this before and that sales training is so so filled with um, either its tactics or its product focus, but what we really want to focus is at how do you bring your sales skill, how do you bring those soft skills into your sales process? So, you know, so much of this is about the three sort of iconic um, characters in The Wizard of Oz. You've got to have brains, like our friend, the, the uh, scarecrow. <laughs> You've got to have heart, like the Tin Woodsman. And you've got to have courage. Yeah. Like the Cowardly Lion. So let's move along down our sales process and, and talk about um, 
Let's and all the things that get in the way of those, which is my role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about brains. What gets in the way of brains? <laughs> what gets in your way of brains? So um, one of the things that we talk about all the time on the show is just how critically important it is to learn harder. So, I mean, I think the Wicked Witch of the West will tell you that you know it all, you've got it handled, you've got it covered, and there's nothing else for you to learn. And that is the way to sell like the scarecrow with no brains. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so if I think about it really hard, what, it, what I think is really the most important thing for a salesperson to deploy when it comes to their intelligence is you've got to think about the questions you're going to ask. You really have to think about your customer, that individual customer, not all customers, but that individual customer and think through their daily life and think about their problems, their KPIs, um, customize that. You know, one of the things that I've been doing some research around right now is um, the biggest challenges facing sellers. And one of the biggest questions or one of the biggest things that um, according to, I think this is Richardson research was, that sellers are not asking intelligent questions, right? So how do you learn? How do you learn to ask intelligent questions? How do you build that skill, Sean Carroll, uh, Dorothy? Dor Dorothy, Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, the, the best two things, two things I would say is, is if you feel like you're not mastering this, and this is applicable to people who are newbies, junior woodchucks, whatever you want to call new people in sales, to the most seasoned professionals, if you're not getting the results you want, go back and look at what you're asking your customers. So two places to do this would be to ask your customers. Ask them, you know, yeah. what, are, what are the criteria you use to make decisions? What factors go into it? What are your biggest obstacles? What changes for you on a daily basis? This is, I think, um, okay, so if you look, think of the sales process as like a linear process. Uh, that doesn't yeah. happen. <laughs> it's like herding cats, right? Because as much as we want to make it a linear process, your customers are moving in and out of the process because of incoming stimulus and stuff that's more important that lands on their plate. Yeah. So knowing and understanding what could change, what variables change on a daily basis is super important, super important. So asking your customers. And the second thing I would do would be to um, go on a call with a mentor, like someone else in your company. I'll either take take a season, you know, sales rep out or go with your boss. Even if it's, um, I love going on ride alongs. I love going on ride alongs with my sellers. I'm not their industry expert necessarily. I'm not their product expert, but someone else in the situation can be aware of what you're missing and have an opportunity to yeah. interject or ask different questions or give you that feedback. Like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, that important feedback, super, super important. Yeah. And you will know that I, the wicked witch am at work when you are throwing up features and product and benefits even, and you're throwing up, if you're not asking questions, uh, you're being influenced by the wicked witch of the West. And I love that. <laughs> okay, good. So brains. What's so that? Brains. 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 Yes. Okay. So walk yeah. along the sales process down the yellow brick road. I wish we had. Wish we. I wish I had something. I should have yellow brick road in my office. Wish I had a flying monkey. <laughs> well, I have a flying monkey. <laughs> monkey is head trash that's what that's you wouldn't the wicked witch unleashes the head trash oh my god i love the head trash i send it away every day i love it so much yes absolutely well so the next thing part of the sales process that i think is super important is let's talk about heart what that means i think in the sales process is that you've got to actually care like you have to actually care you cannot fake the funk you cannot, people will understand, people will sniff it out immediately if you are only in something uh, for yourself. Absolutely. Now, yeah. what gets in the way of people showing up with their heart? Fear. <laughs> I send fear your way. You will not meet your quota, my pretties. <laughs> they will not answer the phone. They will go dark on you. You're really scary. 
<laughs> That's why I didn't paint my face green. It would have been too startling for anyone to watch. It would have frightened small children. No, <laughs> no kidding. And we have a lot of small children that watch our show. I'm <laughs> but yeah, um, so how do you overcome? <laughs> well, you don't overcome me, do you? <laughs> no. Well, I, I think if you don't have a heart for what you're doing and you don't have a heart for the people that you're serving, it's going to be really difficult to have a long and successful sales career, especially with the company you're in. So, you know, your options are um, go find a new career <laughs> or find a new company possibly, or really, this is magical. I've, I've been in some situations where we've been able to flip the light bulb on people where they think of selling as completely self-centered, self-serving. Um, I've got to make my quota. I've got to, you know, this is the way I make my living too. Flipping it to thinking about serving people, having a heart and caring about what happens to other people in, in your business. What you do and what you sell to people has an impact on their job, their outcome, their success, the people that work for them, their customers. So selling really can be from a place of service to people. And their little dogs too. And their little dogs too. <laughs> it does. I mean, if you think about, I was talking about this with um, somebody who I admire very, very much who has an extraordinary entrepreneurial program that stands out way beyond anything I've seen. But anyway, we'll talk about it later. But one of the things that we talk, he talks about with sales is knowing what your company wants to be for the world mm. three years from now, five years from now, when you're focusing on the difference that you're going to make in the world three years from now, five years from now, you, your perspective shifts and you can start to create, now this is not the Wicked Witch of the West talking, this is the real. You start to create this new horizon mm -hmm. that is inspiring for your customers to step into and they realize that you've got their back and yeah. that you have their interests in mind and that you've got an idea. Besides, how do I get you into this contract this month? <laughs> yeah, that's where that, that Wicked Witch creeps in when it's, oh God, you know, I'm, I fear of failure and um, you know, like you said, not making quota. And if the reason that you're picking up the phone and you're calling someone is because you've got to make quota because you need a deal because your boss is on your butt or whatever. Um, that's so it comes through on the other end. Oh, that's going to be inspiring. You've talked to somebody like that before. Nobody likes to be used. Nobody likes to be manipulated. No, not at all. No, not even so, me. Yeah. It's, you got to have heart. And if you don't, if you don't have a heart for what you're doing or for what you're selling, reevaluate your priorities. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't really go with your rich. <laughs> well, that's my calling. All right. So what's okay. next? All right. So this was my favorite one because I can take this away from you so fast as the Wicked Witch of the West. No kidding. You have to have courage. Rawr. Yeah, courage. This is a real thing. This is a real thing in the sales process as a salesperson. I think it takes so much courage to knock on someone's door or to call them or to show up and to presume that you can be helpful. That does take courage. Doesn't mean that you don't you aren't helpful. Doesn't mean that you're not going to be the solution. Um, it takes courage to face rejection. Uh, it takes courage to be vulnerable. I don't have all the answers. I don't know all the questions. Because what happens is the Wicked Witch shows up, and worse yet, she unleashes those damn flying monkeys. <laughs> and your heart starts pounding, and your palms get moist, and there's a voice in your head that says, Stop! Don't do that bold thing that you were planning on doing, my little pretty. <laughs> because you will die or face dismemberment. I'm positive if you pick up the phone and call that CEO, you may actually die. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Yes. Um, so how do you build courage? How do you be persistent? How do you overcome the flying monkeys, you know, take, that have been unleashed in your head? <laughs> That's the question. Um, it's different for everyone, but I think it really is. I think both number one and two actually really help with this courage thing. Um, thinking through, 
questions to ask and being prepared. That's, that's that whole having a brain. Let's be intelligent about it. Think through the questions from your customer's perspective and what really service do you provide to them? Um, and, and being prepared, boy, that can knock out a lot of that and, and give you more courage if you know you've got the answers. And then actually caring, um, caring not just about getting the results for you, but caring about your customers and the buyers and caring that you have good solutions for them. That can give you more courage and bolster your ability to pick up the phone and, and be persistent. Um, yeah. what do you and listen to, listen to Defying Gravity. If you're really jammed up, just listen to Defying Gravity from Wicked and it will get you going. But <laughs> no, there's, sometimes, sometimes you just got to go for it. <laughs> you know, like sometimes and be, or have a new idea. Have a new idea. Like, hey, I've been thinking about your business and what we've been talking about, and I wanted to run this new idea past you. That is irresistible. You've been thinking about me, and you have a new idea for my business? Yeah, try new things. I think that um, we, we fear rejection. We fear failure. But if you don't ever try something new, you fall into the same trap of everyone else who's doing the same thing, calling on the same customers. It really is. I think right now in sales, I would say it's probably um, your one of your biggest challenges is to not be the same, not not be not be lumped and clumped into the same category as every other crappy salesperson that's come before you. That's, right. That's how. I mean, I think that way. That's how a lot of your customers and buyers think. Oh, it's a salesperson. Are they going to be like every crappy person that's before them that's wasted my time that says, "Tell me about your business." <laughs> <laughs> You should know about my business. My business is all out there. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> my business is all out there. Oh, today. This just took a turn. Okay. You can get all up in Sean's business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But take, take bold actions. And here's another way to do it is look, if you look around you, there are people making bolder moves than you are. And if you can just scare yourself a little bit that you're going to get left behind if you don't make some bold moves, sometimes fear is a good motivator. <laughs> right? It is. The other thing I want to, I think, bring up too is that persistence takes practice. Yep. You have to practice being persistent. Um, there's some great research out there that says, especially like for um, procrastinators, I think this is particularly important. But if you say to a procrastinator or someone who lacks that grit or persistence, say, well, just do this one thing for three minutes. Yeah. People are exponentially more likely to actually complete it and finish it if they can just get through three minutes. So practice being persistent. Does that mean, like, I know you are really fantastic at this. Not the witch part, but Diana. <laughs> I'm saying, well, I've got to make I've got to make a hundred quality connections, whatever, yeah. this week. So if I haven't made them yet, I'm going to be persistent and keep going. Not just well, it's the end of the week. Didn't do it. Didn't hit the goal. Hmm. If you can pick, start little, start small. If you know you're someone who lacks persistence, if you don't you don't have that grit factor yet, start little. Think of some things that you can say, if I could just do this for three minutes. I know when I am working out in boot camp, which some days it's fun, some days it's just absolute drudgery. I, I know that I can say, I can do anything for 45 seconds. <laughs> That's what my yoga teacher says. You can do anything for 60 seconds. And I'm like, bitch. <laughs> Wall squats, oh. push-ups, planks. Oh. You can do anything for 45 seconds. Yeah, it to a minute, right? So that's, I think we can, we practice persistence and get courage. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so now we get to the punchline of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. is, the reality is, or do you want to say it or do you want me to? No, you, go ahead, go ahead. And then I will melt. Don't, don't miss the melt. <laughs> the reality is, is, You've already got these things. <gasps> There's no place like home. You had it all along. The only thing that you've done is you've allowed your wicked of the West to get in your way. And all you really need is a bucket of water. <laughs> I'm melting. I'm melting. <laughs> I'm melting. Yes, you are. And, you know, at the end also, uh, 
have to do some editing here because uh, there is no wizard. You are the wizard. <laughs> Excuse me, while I get my hat back on. Yeah. Okay, you were gonna wrap it. You were gonna wrap us up. <laughs> yeah, I have to regroup. In the end, you know, if you think of your customers as Oz, and you know, take down the curtain, they're just people. Um, they too have to operate with intelligence and heart and courage. And selling as a service, if you can get past the good witch or past the bad witch and her crazy flying monkeys look how look at how like he is he is kooky looking that they one were, they were terrifying when i was growing up they right? were terrifying i was terrified of this movie and they're terrifying terrifying flying around in your head but if you can you know realize that you have all these tools and things and skills you have to practice them and your customers and buyers need them as well and uh then you know you you can take those deals home that's right that's right. <laughs> All right. I think that we did a. I think we did a pretty good job on this yellow brick, brick road to your success. And it's all about your head trash and remembering to practice your skills around your heart and your brain and your courage. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay, all right. everyone. Thank you for. Thanks for watching this one. I know you. I know you must be for nothing. <laughs> All right, I'll take us out by saying stop hoping and start selling. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um I can't get the Do you have uh, other places you wear that hat? Do I have hat yeah? I, I wear this regularly when I sweep my floor. I think I have a hat groove right here in the middle of my forehead. Yeah, a hat head. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I had to dig okay, this let's up. See, this... Let's see your outfit, though. This, this is oh, too good. All right, you ready? Yeah. Bam! Ah, that is so good. Giving it up for the team. <laughs> this is possibly the worst costume on the planet. Um, it's made. Ah! Of, I think it's made of fiberglass. It is the itchiest, most uncomfortable, god awful thing I've ever made. <laughs> Showing us your puppies. All right. <laughs> exactly that's what I meant oh my gosh okay